Everyone knows that Sung Jin Woo's real name is actually Sung Jin Him. I know it, you know it, but the people of Solo Leveling didn't know of his true powers for over a hundred chapters. Imagine, you think you are the pinnacle of hunters, the top of the top, and this dude, a guy who just a few months ago was known as the weakest hunter, walks in and trashes your entire career. Because after the double dungeon incident, wherever Jin Woo ventured, people were shook because of his strength. Even the nurses at the hospital wanted a piece of his big black shadow monarch powers. The first relevant person to realize Jin Wu had changed was his sister Jin Ha. She asked him if he was working out and boy you did she have no up. idea. Her brother was about to go from a tiny little wimp to the Chad of all Chads. This would be further reinforced when she is saved by Jin Wu when a group of monsters attacks her school where it's completely obvious to her that he is one of the strongest hunters out there. But the hunter to truly experience the might of a new Jin Woo was C-ranker Wang Dong Suk. He had the brilliant idea to murder Jin Woo for some extra cash. Let's see how that turned out. <laughs> Wang's reaction to witnessing Jin Wu's power was priceless. He had thought it was Jin Ho that defeated the spider boss with his OP equipment, but everything shattered when Jin Wu effortlessly killed every single one of his men with ease and then proceeded to behead him. This was still when Jin Wu was recognized as an E rank, so imagine a C rank surprise to see someone significantly below him in rank overpowering him like this. <laughs> This action would cause Jin Wu to be noticed by an S rank hunter, Huang Dong Su, who, after hearing that his brother was killed, vowed to hunt down and murder Jin Wu. Let's see how that worked out for you, buddy, because from what I'm seeing, is you thought you could beat Himothy himself. Yeah, Huang Dong Su isn't the sharpest when it comes to grasping powers, but honestly, he's also an idiot in general. Bro came all the way to Korea only to think that Jin Wu had died in a red gate. Bro, this is Sung Jin Wu. You should know. Oh, he is better than that. But before he could even bask in our goat's presence, he heads back to America. It wouldn't be until the International Hunters Conference when Jung Soo had the genius idea of kidnapping Jin Woo's best friend Jin Ho in order to provoke him. And he got wrecked, bamboozled, annihilated, absolutely screwed with. Jin Woo wasn't playing around. Before he could die though, Jung Soo was saved by S rank hunter Thomas Andre, who would get destroyed by Jin Woo later too. But we'll get to him later. Jin Woo killed Jung Soo with no hesitation and turned him into the shadow greed. But the events of the spider dungeon also showed Jin Wu's best friend Jin Ho his true powers. Originally, Jin Ho only became friends with our goat because of his strength. He needed to complete 20 gates, but was D rank and couldn't do anything. While originally using Jin Wu for selfish reasons, the two would grow close and forge an unforgettable bond. And even after being granted the headmaster position he wanted, Jin Ho said nope and joined Jin Wu's guild as vice headmaster. Jin Ho's reaction to his buddy's power was so strong that he became his biggest dick rider. Honestly, at this point, I might be in contention with that. Like, I've been glazing this dude for seven videos straight. It is. It is. It is. It is. But anyways, Jin Wu killing Dun Suk would also be the first time the assistant to the chairman and eventual chairman of the Hunters Association, Wu Jin Chul, would start to become suspicious of his strength. He was one of the first people to visit Jin Wu after his experience within the double dungeon, believing he had gone through a second awakening. As we know, the system hadn't been used yet, so Jin Wu was still at the level of an E rank, and so Jin Chul left pretty disappointed. It wasn't until after Jin Wu had killed Dong Suk, did he start to realize something was off? As there was no way an E ranker could have killed a C rank. However, as time went, he realized that Jin Wu was way more powerful than even the average S ranker, and the two would become close acquaintances. But what if I told you the next hunters to react to Jin Wu's true power were people he actually worked alongside as an E ranker? During the dungeon prison arc, Jin Wu would reunite with the C ranker Song Chi Yu and the B rank healer Li Ju He. Imagine their surprise when they saw how goaded this man had become in just a month. Ju He really should have made her move here. 
character. She was the only one to really have confidence in Jin Woo when he was still E rank. They were even gonna go out to dinner after the raid before things turned south. She could have easily won Jin Woo over and had his big black shadow. But nope, she let that opportunity slide. Retired as a hunter, and now I bet she's crying in the corner, eating a tub of ice cream, thinking about how lonely she is. But don't worry, because no, I can fill that place. I don't think you have the facilities for that big man. While Mr. Song isn't a super strong hunter, he's in fact a master of Kumdo, a martial Korean sword art. He's also the master to Cha Hain and Jin Woo's future wife, but we'll get to her a bit later. Both are extremely relieved to see that Jin Woo was alright, and Mr. Song would even apologize for leaving him in the dungeon. But this man doesn't care anymore. If anything, they did him a favor. Jin Woo would then demonstrate his true strength against a hitman of the Korean Hunters Association, Kang Taishik, who is flabbergasted when this random is going head to head with his assassination skills. Jin Woo even bypasses his camouflage, completely oblivious obliterating him. This battle left both Juhi and Mr. Song stunned as well, where they both promised to keep Jin Woo's secret. The next person to find out Jin Woo's true power was Ah Sung Min. Yeah, I'm not even gonna act like anyone even remembers this guy. Like This was after Jin Woo had been going on a spree of like defeating C-ranked dungeons with Jin Ho. And Sang Min is actually a recruiter for the White Tigers Guild, one of the strongest hunter guilds in Korea. He would attempt to recruit Jin Woo and was the first person to realize all on his own without seeing Jin Woo's skills that our Shadow Monarch was a lot stronger than his E rank title. Jin Woo was so strong at this point that Sang Min only had to take one look at him and he knew he wanted him. Pause in his guild. It was at this point that the S rank hunter Baek Yun Hoo would also be informed about Jin Woo. Word about his strength would spread across Korea, escalating his status, bringing intrigue to multiple S rank hunters along with the major guilds associated with them. It would be at this point where Jin Woo would also serve as a somewhat mentor figure to his sister's friend Han Sung Yi. Just like Jin Woo, Han was an E rank hunter and was being paid a lot of money to stand outside gates by Jin Ho. She would witness Jin Woo's strength during these raids where bro was literally soloing C rank dungeons like it was nothing. But Jin Woo, he really didn't like the idea of her skipping school and being exposed to the dangerous world of gates, especially with her E rank status. In order to persuade her to go back to school, he was able to set them up as a party for a training exercise being held by the the White Tigers Guild. This gate would actually end up being a red gate, which transports the hunters into another dimension where time flows differently and they can't escape until the threat is neutralized. In this raid, there is an A rank accompanying them named Kim Chol. But as soon as he finds out it's a red gate, bro abandons the whole party, only takes the B rankers with him, leaving the rest to fend for themselves. However, one of the B rankers, Park Hee Jin, senses the Riz emanating from our goat. She, through sheer instinct stays behind with Jin Woo and the weaker hunters, which was the greatest decision of her life because here Jin Woo demonstrate his sheer power as he murders the entire ice bear population protecting everyone. Furthermore, the gang would re-encounter Kim Chul who had gone insane after losing the lives of several fellow hunters. So without hesitation, Jin Woo axes this man like it was nothing. Let me remind you, at this point, Jin Woo is still a suspiciously strong hunter, not a well-known S rank. A nobody taking down a high level A rank would be pretty surprising to anyone. Which leads us to Jin Woo meeting the leader of the White Tiger Guild S ranker Baek. Now, this guy has a power called the Eyes of the Beast, which allows him to gauge the strength of another animal or hunter with just one look, which instantly tells him through Jin Woo's presence alone that he was on an equal level to him, or maybe even stronger than him. They literally have a hockey measuring contest, and Baek is one of the only people to realize of Jin Woo's level up ability, as every time they meet, Jin Woo has gotten stronger. However, after leaking his powers to the party from White Tiger's Guild, and Baek, Jin Woo decides to get his S rank license after being reevaluated publicly. But as he's waiting a few days for this to happen, he joins a mining team for the Hunter's Guild to experience a A rank dungeon firsthand. It's here where he meets Cha Hain. And oh boy, does he make an impression on her. Cha is the biggest simp in the series. She is constantly trying to get his big black shadow. And so you're probably wondering why. Why did such 
watch a beauty like her, a complete badass, turn into the biggest simp ever. What is this, Twitch chat? Because it was love at first smell. Brother, ugh. Yeah, if only it were that easy. Turns out talking about One Piece for 40 minutes on a date makes him ghost you. You see, Chahain has an extremely sensitive nose that can track the smell of mana. This makes all hunters and monsters have a very foul smell for her. But Jinwoo, nah, this guy's got the Shadow Monarch cologne on. Enough to make any baddie fall for him. This is especially highlighted when he saves the squad of A-rankers from the Orc King, which Chahain also witnesses. Furthermore, he saves her life during the Jeju Island dungeon raid, causing her to fall in love with him. It would also be during this time when Jinwoo finally met the chairman of Korea's Hunter Association, Go Gun Hee, who would attempt to personally recruit Jinwoo to his organization. But Jinwoo said no, as it would restrict him from going into higher level dungeons. But despite this, the two formed a very close and professional connection. And then we get to the moment where Jinwoo finally showcases himself as the strongest hunter, the Jeju Island Raid. This is where all the S ranks from Korea and Japan came together to form a raid party to stop a massive ongoing monster threat. But before they went to take on the monsters, they had a sparring session where Japan's strongest hunter, Goto Ryuji, would spar Jinwoo. And after fighting him for a short while, bro realized he f up because he can't even land a hit. So he says, nah, this isn't even my final form. So he goes full power. Even then, bro, gets crowned on. Luckily for Goto though, the match ended before things could get ugly. But if it went on any longer, they may have been down a S rank hunter for the raid. Now imagine being anyone else in the room and you see this guy destroying one of the strongest S rank hunters, a candidate for nation level. They all pissed their pants before Jinwoo's strength. This made Jinwoo's presence known to the entire world, which would even be reinforced by his performance at the raid itself, as he would defeat the Ant King when all the other s rank hunters from Japan and Korea got fodderized. Who would have guessed that? <laughs> <laughs> this would also be the moment the Ant King, whose entire purpose was to be the strongest, learned that someone out there was better than him, and so he became Beru, one of Jinwoo's best shadows. After this incident, Jinwoo would be recognized as a hero worldwide, with people from all over Earth desperate to learn more about him and recruit him. America was especially interested in him, and so during byung yus funeral, they sent Norma Seliner, a representative of the American government, to meet with him. She possessed the ability to amplify a hunter's power, which they wanted to use to bribe Jinwoo into becoming a hunter for the US. However, upon failing the process, Norma became terrified at what she was witnessing, as a dark, powerful presence was inside Jinwoo's body petrifying her. This guy was so strong already that he couldn't even get a boost. She was just so beneath him that it wouldn't even make a difference. Japan would then become indebted to Jinwoo yet again as he would pretty much by himself solve the entire Japan crisis when the giant monarch appeared which was on an even bigger scale than Jeju Island a threat that could destroy the whole country and it was at this arc where Song is Il Huan comes into play, one of the strongest s rank hunters and Jin Wu's father. He was sent by the rulers to assassinate the new shadow monarch and upon learning that his son was his target, he was absolutely horrified. But after watching Jin Wu dominate on the battlefield, fighting on the side of the rulers unknowingly, the rulers recognize him as their ally and so Huan, <laughs> okay I saw some comments in the last video where you used to pronounce his name like Huan, like J-U-A-N, like bro it's H-W-A-N, how are you supposed to pronounce? Announce it. It's Juan. All right. Anyway, so Juan is tasked. Oh my God! No, I can't. So Juan is tasked as his protector rather than his assassin. Juan. Oh my God! Every time I say it. Song Il Juan was extremely proud of the man his son had become, and was very happy they were able to fight on the same side of a war that should have never involved them to begin with. Father and son would finally reunite during the Monarch War, where Huang would defend Jin Wu from the Frost Monarch and die protecting his son. After the Japan 
time crisis, the whole world knew about Song Jin Woo and wanted to see what he was really made of. That, including one of the nation level hunters such as Thomas Andre and Liu Zhigang. The latter became interested in Jin Woo after witnessing him taking down the giants during the Japan incident easier than he did. As a result, he asked the Korean Hunters Association to give him all the public information they had on Jin Woo. Thomas Andre, on the other hand, would have an uncanny confidence within Jin Woo as he would bet his company's whole skyscraper that Jin Woo would not only survive the Japan crisis but resolve it. However, he wouldn't want to fight Jin Woo directly and was more worried about Wang Dong Su doing something stupid against them, which is exactly what happened. What do you expect? This dude is dumb as hell. And this led to the two powerful hunters facing off. And let's not act like this was an even fight, okay? <laughs> Thomas would angrily attack Jin Woo, barraging him with powerful attacks, but things changed when the Shadow Monarch forced Thomas to bleed. This was a total shock, as not many people could fight the strongest S ranker in the world. And so Thomas went all out, using reinforcement and even spiritual body manifestation to affirm his victory. But it wasn't good enough, as Jin Woo beat him to the brink of death with just his bare hands, not even using his shadows. After the incident, Jin Woo and Thomas would have a conversation where Jin Woo told Thomas that him and his guild members didn't deserve to die like Dong Su. And so they came to find a mutual respect and understanding for each other. But think about this, even one of the national level hunters, one of the seven rulers vessels, was scared of Sung Jin him. However, even after all the hunters knew Jin Woo was the shit, there was still a group of monsters that were oblivious to his true strength. This of course were the monarchs. Now these guys thought they could just invade earth like they own the place but our guy wasn't gonna let them do it they need to know their place for example take the beast monarch rakan who along with the frost monarch was able to fatally stab jin Wu through the chest with his claw seemingly killing him however the black heart would activate at this moment and fully awaken as the shadow monarch after chasing Rakan down, Jin Wu would mock him, telling Rakan he would only bow his head to him if he could survive five attacks from Jin Wu first. Rakan would transform into his full wolf form, claiming Jin Wu wouldn't leave there unscathed. But this was an empty threat as Jin Wu didn't even need five. He killed this dude in four hits. Then he made a mockery of the Frost Monarch just moments later. But compared to the strongest monarch, the Dragon Monarch Antares, these guys were pebbles. He would assault the human world with the dragon army after learning Jin Wu had killed three of the monarchs and decided to deal with the new shadow monarch himself. During his initial assault, he would burn up a Canadian S ranker named Jay Mills and cut a whole path of destruction, massacring millions. Jin Wu would finally arrive and was immediately cornered by Antares' army of 10 million, but using Dragon Sphere, he was able to immobilize every single one of them in one moment. But this dude is him. Every solo leveling video is is me talking about how Jin Wu is him. Uh, anyways, in this fight, Antares grew more and more annoyed with Jin Wu's refusal to acknowledge defeat due to the fact that Jin Wu's attacks had no effect on him. But this was all part of Himothy's plan as Antares accidentally left himself wide open, enabling Jin Wu to almost slice him in half. This was surprising for the Dragon Monarch as he was shocked Jin Wu could actually hurt him, but he didn't have time to think as Jin Wu would hold him off long enough for the space to distort to such an extent that the rulers could enter the human world and finish him. While Jin Wu didn't kill the dragon monarch, it's undeniable he was the integral factor in the monarch's defeat. Also, after the time reset, he goes back and like kill all the monarchs. He is him. Watch this video if you want to learn more about that. Anyways, bye.